right, I forgot to write the 4.6 here. This is 4.6 complex zeros, uh, the fundamental theorem of algebra. All right, some definitions. I'll just go ahead and write these out. All right, most of these definitions you already know. A variable in the complex number system is referred to as a complex variable. Okay, a complex polynomial function f of degree n is a function in this form. This should be familiar to you by now where these are complex numbers. Okay, so basically it's just like a normal polynomial except you have complex numbers and a of n, a sub n does not equal zero. n is a non-negative integer and x is a complex variable. As before, a sub n is called a leading coefficient, you guys should know that, of f. A complex number r is called a complex zero of f, if f of r equals zero. Okay, so before we were dealing with uh, real zeros, now we're dealing with complex zeros. Okay, the fundamental theorem of algebra. Every complex polynomial function f of x of degree n is greater than or equal to 1 has at least one complex zero. All right, I think, um, let's see here. Yeah, let's do this theorem first. Every complex polynomial function f of x of degree n is greater than or equal to 1 can be factored into n linear factors not necessarily distinct that means that you could have a repeating factor of this form, where a sub n, r1, r2, etc., are all complex numbers. And I think we're actually going to skip over the proof for this. <clears throat> the conjugate pairs theorem. All right. All right, I'm going to write in the conjugate pairs theorem. All right. Let f of x be a polynomial whose coefficients are real numbers. If r equals a plus bi is a zero of f, the complex conjugate um, a minus bi is also zero of f. We're actually going to skip over this proof. <clears throat> It'll make more sense when we use this as an example. There's a corollary to this. All right, a polynomial f of odd degree with real coefficients has at least one real zero. And once again, we're going to skip over the proof. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry. All right. Let's do an example. A polynomial f of degree 5, whose coefficients are, Ralph should say, real numbers, has the zeros 1, 5i, and 1 plus i. Find the remaining two zeros. Okay. So, um, since f has coefficients that are real numbers, um, complex zeros appear as conjugate pairs. So, basically, if 5i is a zero then negative 5i is also a 0. If 1 plus i is a 0, then 1 minus i is also a 0. Okay? So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and these were the two missing zeros. I'll let you guys try this one over here. All right, example 2. Find a polynomial f of degree 4 whose coefficients are real numbers that has the zeros 1, 1, and negative uh, 4 plus i. And then we're going to graph the polynomial to verify the result. Okay, so <coughs> since negative 4 plus i is a 0, by the conjugate pairs theorem, negative 4, draw a comma, negative 4 minus i must also be a 0. Okay, now because of the factor theorem, if f of c equals 0, then x minus c is a factor, right? So we can write it like this. We know that it has zeros 1 and 1, so I've got um, f of x times some coefficient, we'll call it a, x minus 1, x minus 1, x minus negative 4 plus i and x minus negative 4 minus i and a can be any real number so we'll just make a 1 okay so I've got x minus 1 x minus 1 <coughs> um, let's see here this is going to become the negative is distributed, so positive, positive, negative. So x plus 4 minus i. 
x plus 4 plus i. Okay. Now these, this part, hopefully you can, fo you can foil that in your head. You get x squared minus 2x plus 1. This one will take a little bit more work. I'm confident you guys all know how to do this whole thing. So I'll just tell you what it factors or what it uh, multiplies out to be. Let's see here. Those are eyes, by the way, the little squigglies. Okay, so these two combine, these two cancel out, these two cancel out, and this becomes a plus one. So I've got x squared minus 2x plus 1 times, um, oops, x squared plus 8x minus 17. And if you multiply that out, you end up with 4x squared plus 6x cubed plus 2x squared minus 26x plus 17. All right, and that is our polynomial. Now, if you were to graph this, I'm not going to draw it, but if you go ahead and graph this on your own calculator, you will see <coughs> that um, it, ha it has only one real zero, and that's at x equals 1. And the other ones, the other ones are complex, so they don't hit the x-axis. All right, another theorem that doesn't have a name. Oh, where is it? There it is. All right, every polynomial function with real coefficients can be uniquely factored over the real numbers into a product of linear factors and or irreducible quad quadratic factors. All right, let's do an example. Find the complex zeros of the polynomial function, blah, 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 blah. <coughs> the function has a degree of 4, so f will have 4 complex zeros. By the Descartes rule of signs, there's one positive real zero, okay? And the reason is because there's only one variation in, in the sign. Okay, so one positive real zero. If you plug in negative x, you end up with this. And now there's one, two, three. Okay, so there either there are three or one negative real zeros. Okay, so one positive and then either three or one negative real zeros. Now the rational zeros theorem, <coughs> we're gonna be looking at this number and this number. P, uh, the factors of 18 are positive negative 1, positive negative 2, positive negative 3, positive negative 6, positive negative 9, and positive negative 18. And for 3, we've got positive negative 1, positive negative 3. So if I were to do all the combinations of P over Q, this is what I get. Positive negative 1 third, positive negative 2 thirds, positive negative 1, positive negative 2, positive negative 3, positive negative 6, positive negative 9, and then 8, positive negative 18. All right, now if you graph this on your calculator, I'll just do a quick sketch. It looks something kind of like this. Um, kind of like that. <coughs> okay. Um, the graph has the characteris characteristics that we expect of this polynomial degree 4, okay? It behaves like y equals 3x to the 4th for large numbers. It has a y-intercept of negative 18, okay? And there are x-intercepts near negative 2 and between 0 and 1. So 1 is somewhere over here, and this is between 0 and 1. So... We're going to try negative 2, and then this one, maybe it's positive 1 third, maybe it's positive 2 thirds, okay? So, 
using synthetic division, let me change back to, let me use purple. I'm going to divide negative 2 into this. 3, 5, 25, 45, negative 18. Pull down the 3, negative 6, negative 1, 2, 27, um, negative 54, negative 9, positive 18, 0. Okay, so f of x equals x plus 2 times 3x cubed minus x squared plus 27x minus 9. So this is the depressed equation. The depressed equation can be factored by grouping. Let's take a look here. Um, I'll, I'll rewrite it. From this, I can pull out an x squared. I've got 3x minus 1. And from these, I can pull out a 9. 3x minus 1. So, <coughs> I can factor this again. Let me scroll down a bit. I've got my x minus 2 out in front, I'm sorry, x plus 2 out in front, and this factors into x squared plus 9 and 3x minus 1. Okay? So, if I solve, obviously I get x equals negative 2, x equals positive 1 third. This one, if I subtract 9 from both sides, I'm going to get x squared equals negative 9, and then when I take the square root, I'm going to get x equals positive negative 3i. Okay? So, the four complex zeros are negative 3i, positive 3i, negative 2, and 1 third. There we go. All right. You guys can go ahead and try this one, and that's all.